Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name's Aaron and this is my veg patch. I've been a very busy boy today and I have built my horseshoe shaped bed using some decking boards that I picked up from my dad's allotment. He's given up the allotment this year because he's moving away so I got lots of goodies which I'll show you in videos to come. I've got some exciting bits there so stay tuned for those. In my previous video I added some extra ridge poles and I added these tree stakes just to give it some extra support. I've got a plan to make this polytunnel even stronger. And I've got a plan to make this polytunnel even stronger. I've been to my local hardware shop and I've picked up I've picked up some wooden bats. And what I'm gonna do with these is build a bit more of like a skeleton frame, I guess, inside this. So the plan is I'm gonna build a door frame this side. Probably going to put it in a bit because I don't want to have to be squeezing in here because I've already made my path quite narrow. But with a polytunnel this size, I went to maximize the bed space. I'm probably going to put them about here and then across there so I'm not having to duck under it too much. So I'm going to put one this side, one this side, and then a bit going across. And then these will be screwed into the bed to support those. And then I think what I'm going to do is drill a hole through the wood and then use the garden wire to secure it onto the frame and that's going to add a lot of extra stability and stop it rocking side to side and uh, should turn this cheap polytunnel into a bit of a beast right let's do that first bit and see how we get on oops you can never find a pen when you need one better go get one from the house I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen, I should use a pencil really, the pen, to work out the curve of the tunnel and then cut my piece of wood to match that so that it just comes in there instead of just being square it'll uh, be angled to the tunnel. Yeah, I think that'll work nicely. And that's going to work quite nice. Don't judge me for my shoddy work on the bed. Um, it's not the prettiest, but it'll work. It doesn't help that I haven't built this on particularly even ground. So there's some bits where it's higher, bits where it's lower. I mean, ideally, I should have dug it all, dug it all out. But this is really difficult to dig this ground because I've got the roots all coming in from the trees, and loads of stones and stuff in there. It um, would have taken me ages. And I'd have had to <laughs> rent an excavator or something. But it's done and it'll work. Right, let me uh, get some screws. For this wire, and it's like a metal wire. I had someone comment on the previous video saying about me using twine on these. It is, it's metal wire, so it should last a little while. He did give me a very good tip though, and that was to drill holes through these and these, like tap, self tap, uh, self tapping screws, and I would have probably made that a lot stronger. But these are like garden canes, so they'd probably just disintegrate, to be honest. They'll help in the way that they're there, you know, just to give it a little bit extra support. But yeah, I think that advice definitely would work if I was using like metal poles. So thank you for your advice. If anybody else has any tips for anything that I'm doing, please share them. I'm kind of making things up as I go along. I'm not exactly a super DIY person anyway. So, same again on that side. And then I'll do a batten between them and that'll make it even more stable. I won't make you watch me do every single one. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, so that's the first frame on. And, well, I was just giving it a little wobble around here. And you can see all the movements in this side now. That side's barely moving at all. So, so I'd call that a job well done. But I'm not finished yet. I need to do the same this side. And then there's one more stage. But I'll leave that for in a minute. Let me put the other frame on. Right, so the frame is up both sides now. I've done sort of like a door frame. And then use that wire to attach it. I've also use the leftover pieces of wood to do like a little cross section at the bottom and that's just going to steady that frame a little bit more. It is screwed into the bed as well 
I'm probably going to paint these just to give them a bit of extra protection before I put the cover on. On this side, obviously, because that's not where the door is, I've also put another batten across to uh, just add a little bit more strength, and that is screwed into the tree stakes that go into the ground. So that's supporting the upper part and supporting this lower part. As you can see, the sun is going down and I'm running out of time. So I'm going to have a quick tidy up and then tomorrow the cover's going to go on. I'm going to keep an eye on the weather though because it's supposed to be really windy tomorrow. I don't particularly want to be trying to put on a cover in like gale force winds. So I'm going to see what it's like. If it is suitable, then I will put the cover on tomorrow. I'm going to keep it in one video because I wanted to just do it in two parts. I didn't want to drag it out like a whole series about polytunnels. I just want to get it built and get some stuff in here. But yeah, it's not really moving anywhere now. I think this polytunnel frame is going to massively outlive the cover. Anyway, like I said, it's getting dark, so I better just get tidied up in here, put my drilling stuff in the shed, and then I'll be back in the morning. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's the next day. It's about 7 a.m. I'll be talking a bit quietly because I don't want to wake the neighbours or my son, really. He didn't sleep very well last night. He was up and down, so I think him and Monica are both quite knackered. I mean, I'm knackered, but I've also got to get on with this. So I've made myself a strong coffee. I've got a coat on. It's quite chilly this morning. There's no like extreme weather warnings or anything, so I think I'll be fine to carry on with this. So I think the first job of the day it's going to be to paint the wood that I installed yesterday. It's just some garden paint, but it offers a bit of protection against the weather. Well, in this case, it'll just be like the dampness of it being inside a polytunnel. I've also thought of another way that I can actually protect those upright supports. I think what I'm going to do is, I've still got some more scaffolding board, so I think I'm going to cut some more pieces to size and sandwich those boards between two, two boards. So that, that way there's no actual soil touching the uprights at all they're sort of boxed in might get a little bit of transfer moisture from the decking board to this but it won't be in direct contact with the soil and it won't be anywhere near as wet it means i use like i lose like a couple of inches of bed but if it means the frame's gonna last a lot longer then it's worth it got to pop out at about 10 o'clock and pop it into town with my little my little boy reuben um to get a mother's day present should have got that already but i'm quite forgetful and i didn't realize how close it was so i'm gonna to have to run into town with him get a card and a present for mother's day and for my own mother and uh, then i'll be back to try and get the cover on but first i need to smash this out it's seven o'clock now so i've got a couple of hours yet right better get cracking i've gone for this nice thyme green color i want to keep it looking kind of natural this end of the garden as much as possible. Obviously a great big plastic polytunnel isn't very natural looking but colour scheme wise anyway. So I'm going to do like bark chippings on the ground like over the top of this ground cover and I think I'm going to use this same paint to paint the beds. I'm going to have to wait until it's a bit warmer and the outsides of them dry out a bit more. At the moment they're very wet they just won't take the paint anyway. Probably would have been easier just to paint all of the uh, bits of wood before I put them on but I don't want to make things too easy for myself, do I? But yeah, I think I'm going to paint beds this same colour anyway. Making a right mess here, it's getting all over the floor. I mean, it doesn't matter so much. The, that'll be covered in soil anyway, but... I'm sorry if the first half of this video was a little uh, kind of vague on, how, on what I was getting up to yesterday. I um, had already been... I'd already been down my dad's allotment, um, clearing out a load of stuff. Like I said in the video yesterday, he's moving away, so there was so much stuff, like so much stuff that he was clearing out. So I got quite a few goodies up there that are really going to benefit me here, and I will do a video shortly showing you what I got—an allotment hole, I guess. There's quite a lot of stuff. It took me a good couple of hours just to get it all to the car. Right, that's the first upright done won't film the whole thing. I'll crack on with that and uh, see you in a bit. Right, painted all the uprights. I quite like the colour. I'm quite happy if that's turned out. I've also painted the outside of the beds because they're the bits you're going to see. So it's more for aesthetic than to protect the wood. It's all, it's, the decking boards are quite heavily treated. So 
I think they'll just be fine as they are. Plus, it's my poly tunnel, so I'll do what I want. Right, I said about... There was a whole another segment to this, but I forgot to turn the microphone on. <laughs> but uh, I boxed in the uprights by putting another board in between the outer board the outer board and the bed, and that's to protect it from the soil, so it's not just going to have direct contact with the soil. Sometimes I'll sit up in the evening and uh, mull over some ideas. And poor Monica, bless her, she has to listen to them. You would have thought we'd be in the garden half the day would, uh, would be enough, but it's not. I go in and I'm still thinking about it. But yeah, overall I think it's looking pretty good. I'll just uh, step back so you can see what it's like at, like at the moment. So I've got my nice thyme green frame holding it all together, giving it that extra bit of support. And I've got those boards protecting that. I'm glad I thought of that idea because I think that's going to protect it a lot more and give it a, lot, a couple more years at least. While that dries, I actually might fill the beds because my original idea was to tuck the cover underneath and staple it, but I don't think that's going to be possible because I'm not able to lift those beds. So I think what I'm probably going to do is just batten the, batten the cover on. I've got some other bits of wood that I can use to do that. So it's half eight now. So I've got time to probably fill those. And then when I come back from town and get the Mother's Day presents that I need to get, I'll finally get that cover on. Right, let's get filling. Right, the beds are filled and it's really starting to take shape and I'm getting really excited now. So close. I think I might add a couple more bags in a bit closer to the time when I start putting my tomatoes and things in here because the level will sink. Obviously the leaves and the cardboard will get pressed down and start to break down themselves. But for now, I've got full nice looking beds. The cover will be next, although I'm going to stop filming for now. I'm going to go to town to get my fashionably late Mother's Day present. Sorry Monica, you are going to get a Mother's Day present. Just uh, a bit close to Mother's Day. Right, I'm back. Mother's Day is saved. Also the paint's dry and the weather is actually very nice. It was forecast to be wind and cloud and there's a few little gusts, but nothing, nothing crazy as far as the wind. And it's reasonably clear. So it's time for the most important part and exciting part of the project. And that's getting the cover on. I don't know how easy this is going to be on my own, so I might have to recruit Monica in a bit. She's not going to be on camera, so there's a bit of a gap in the video, that's why. Let's see how I get on on my own first. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this by myself. I'm going to go get Monica and get her to help me to get the cover on. Right, the cover is on. And it was a bit of a challenge. I'm glad I got Monica's help. But I definitely wouldn't have got it on by myself. It's still quite windy, which uh, isn't the best conditions to try and put one on in. I did get a slight rip from one of the poles down the bottom there. I think because I've built the beds inside, I've actually slightly bowed out the, the, the bottom, so so if you're building one of these, perhaps get the cover on before the before you build the beds inside. But it's on. I can just stick a little bit of repair tape on that bit, and the last job to do is to batten it down. So I've got it pretty much as tight as it will go without me causing any extra damage. Unfortunately, that's not super tight, but, but I think it'll be tight enough. I'll try and pull it down a little bit more as I as I move around. But anyway, that's the last job to do. So let's get that done. Right, I've done it. It's up and battened down. There's been a few big gusts and it's, it seems to be doing all right so far. I should be a lot more excited than I am, but I've made a pretty catastrophic error, which I'll show you when we go outside in a minute. I think it'll be okay for now, but it could end up causing me some problems later on. And at this point in the build, I can't fix it. So if the cover fails, it's due to user error, not to the cover necessarily. Well, if it fails in those places, I'll show you when we go back outside. But before I do, there's one more job I need to get done. And that's to tape all the hoops with this stuff. It's called heat tape. And what it will do, it will protect the cover from the hoops when they get hot in the summer. And it will stop the cover degrading as quickly. I'll get to putting that on and then I will show you my massive error when we go outside. Okay, so the heat tape's on, which is another plus. But now to get to the bad. Basically, this pole here is supposed to be on the inside 
and I've only realised now when I was putting the cover on and the cover has been slightly pierced by this pipe because this plastic stop end has come out. It's tight on all the corners and eventually that will rub through. So I think the only thing I can do now is get some cloth tape and put that over it and hopefully that will strengthen it enough that it will last at least a little while because if not that's going to rip all the way up there and then I'm going to have a big problem. It was all going so well. But again, that's user error. <laughs> Maybe those letters and numbers on the instructions did mean something. Anyway, my last thoughts on the out sunny poly tunnel. Well, you get what you pay for. This canvas isn't the strongest. I mean, that really didn't take much for that to get through that. But I think it will last a little while. And the poles aren't very strong. And I've had to reinforce it heavily for it to be able to last a little while. So if you're going to buy a budget polytunnel, just be prepared to spend some more money to reinforce it and put it together properly. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I'll be doing another video soon showing all of the goodies that I got from my dad's allotment. And hopefully that one will have a more positive ending. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you another time. Goodbye for now.